Jeez. What? No. No, I saw it. It said to meet you at the same old place. I must have misread the note. I was sitting up at the old same place. Been there for hours. They finally kicked me out. Oh. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Having a Drink with Mink. I'm your host, Jason Mink. Sorry for the uh, belated beginning. Uh, we're going to get right to it. Uh, I'm not going to keep you waiting. Hope you have a nice beverage on hand. Why not? It's been one hell of a week, and uh, hey, you deserve it. This episode is a comics copia. We're not talking toys. We're not talking uh, records or movies. We're not even going to talk about my new jug band. I've got a new jug band. Um, we're going to focus exclusively on old paper because, hey, this is the old guys who like old comics network. Ah, but first. Ah, let's get right to it. You can see it. I can see it. It's Amazing Adult Fantasy number seven. These are five fantastic thrillers for the more mature reader. Now, uh, I found this book, interestingly enough, at the mall. You know, I hadn't gone out there looking for comics. Yeah, I'd gone out there to do a little skating, you know, maybe get some uh, pita, gyro, hang out with my fellow teens. But I saw there was a sports and collectible shop across the way, and I figured I'd stick my head in there. They had a wall full of comic books. And amazingly enough, this was hanging out there. And uh, like I said, this is number seven. It is an eight shy of being that legendary issue, but nonetheless, still very, very cool to have. Some interesting things to note. Signed by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. Not really sure how much uh, line work Stan did on this particular cover. Maybe he gave himself credits for these uh, stunning little word balloons here. The magazine that respects your intelligence. <laughs> Those were the days, huh? But I was thrilled to pick that up. I paid 30 bucks for it. It's not in the best of condition, but still very cool to have a book from the Marvel pre-superhero era. Absolutely. Uh, then, of course, because uh, Archie starts with A, you know we're going to have some of these here. Here's Archie showing off uh, the Twitter of the day. That's right. Here's Archie rocking a uh, newspaper dress shirt. And uh, considering how this kid sweats... Well, I'm guessing it's not going to hold up to too many wearings. Then we have uh, Archie's joke book right here. Here's Ronnie. Who's at the door, Daddy? I'm not sure, Veronica, but I think it's your date from the basketball team. Wow. Less said about that, the better, huh, folks? Then we have Archie's pals and gals. We girls really go for the London look. Reggie says, that explains why you go for Archie. He's always in a fog. And and yet, Archie's in a car with this guy. You know, it's, uh, come on, dude. He cuts you down at every opportunity. Why are you driving around with him? Jeez, I blame you, Archie. We blame you, Archie. Next up, we have Archie's pals and gals. I think that this, uh, looking at this, must be a recycled cover gag from back in the day. I, I think they had to change it, though, because these are punching bags. Instead, uh, Chughead's charging people 10 cents to uh, yell at the punching bags, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But, you know, hey, it's approved by the comics code. I guess you can't punch a punching bag, huh? It's too violent. And then we have uh, another Archie's Pals and Gals. Here's Riverdale's first snow woman. And, uh, wow. Well, what can you say, huh? And then next up, here's uh, Archie's Pals and Gals. Here are the gang in an antique shop. And the really striking thing about this is the antiques uh, illustrated in this cover aren't as old as this comic is now. Chew on that, teeners. And then we have, uh, apparently someone got some uh, free stickers with a fill-up, and they just couldn't wait to use them. I'm not really sure what the gag was here, but uh, it's sponsored by STP. And then here's, 
Baby Huey and Papa. And this is a comic book that I have a love-hate relationship with. I'd say 90% hate. Growing up, I I really took uh, issue with this. But, uh, you know, these days, well, you just don't see this sort of interpersonal character dynamic in a comic. So, uh, you know, I make it a point to pick these up. The Lil Lottas, you know, all of those wildly politically incorrect Harvey comics. Who would have ever thought that we would see the day, huh? I drink to lessen the pain. All right, then we have uh, Betty and Me. And uh, here's Betty showing off her latest accoutrement. It acts as a scarf, a belt, and a blindfold. Sheesh. Let's get a leash. Guy's a wild animal at this point in time. But uh, it's not like Betty isn't encouraging him. This was uh, probably very topical at the time, issuing a uh, credit card, only it's Betty's smooch card, and uh, Archie can charge all the kisses he wants. You can only imagine what the interest will get you, huh? Then we have uh, Betty and Veronica, and... uh, This one kind of pisses me off because it's one of those pajama party covers that are artificially inflated in prices because weirdos seem to think there's something strange about wanting a comic book with teenagers and their pajamas having pillow fights. Nothing weird about it. This is good, innocent fun. And you're a pervert for thinking otherwise. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and to undermine my point completely, here's a later uh, issue of Betty and Veronica Spectacular, and Betty is uh, veering dangerously close to cherry Pop-Tart territory here. Man, you know, Archie Comics, they go from uh, those Spire books to, uh, you know, to uh, catch a predator material. Yowza! And then, uh, man, to much safer waters. <laughs> It's a solar-powered homicidal maniac. He's done it. He's harnessed the power of the sun. Nothing can stop him now. Nothing. Next up we have, oh, it's Crime Suspense Stories, number 23. And you'll notice the uh, little hype tag at the top. Bad 1950s EC comics. I think that's a real drag, you know. I, maybe these things weren't really selling all that well, but I really don't think you need to hype them as some sort of Ed Wood crap fest. These are some of the best comics published in the 20th century, and uh, they certainly deserve better than that. Here's Crime Patrol, and uh, this is a very striking Johnny Craig cover. you got to dig that composition, man. That really pops. These are real stories from Police Records. I think it's uh, Ghost in the Machine. <laughs> then we have uh, Crime Patrol number five. And then next up, what do we have? It's Daredevil number 150. Now... I'm not quite sure. I uh, may have this in the archive already, but uh, for a buck, I couldn't pass it by. I didn't want to take the chance. I don't have one of those fancy apps on my phone. I just try and remember stuff to the best of my ability. But uh, hey, if I get stuck with an extra uh, first appearance of the Paladin, well, when he gets a show in three years, I won't be complaining. I paid a buck for it. Why not? And then here's... uh, Detective Comics, number 376. And here's a cover I've seen a number of times, but I've never actually been lucky enough to read the comic. Batman, what's wrong? You look like you just saw a ghost. And this is very striking. I really like the purple background. The darker colors on the uh, Batman peering through the window here. That's some striking composition. I believe this is by Carmine Infantino. Let me know if I'm wrong in the comments section below. Or just say hi. It's nice to hear from you. And then here's some Dick Tracy's. Uh, These are Harvey Strip reprints. And, uh, you know, I grabbed them because they were cheap. I'm not necessarily the biggest Dick Tracy fan. But for the covers alone, well, I had to bring them home. This one has seen better days for sure. Absolutely. But the comic inside is complete. And for 50 cents a throw... Well, I would be remiss if I left them behind, wouldn't I? Ah, check that one out. That's phenomenal. 
Absolutely love that. And then what next? Oh, it's a Fantastic Four. Number 96, The Mad Thinker and His Androids of Death. Last weekend, as I was flipping through the dollar box at my local comic book shop, that's Ides Entertainment in downtown Pittsburgh, one of the owners walked past, and I made it a point to say, Hey, Kenny, how you doing? And uh, without looking up, he said, I got something for you. And that uh, disappeared into the back. Came back a couple minutes later with these. And I was over the moon to add Tippy's Friends Go Go, an animal number two to my collection. Now, I am a big Tower Teen humor fan, absolutely. I go for the Tippy Teen, I go for the Go Go, the animal. This stuff is great. Uh, these were. Uh, Books that were produced uh, with the intention of maybe siphoning off a little bit of those Archie sales. Um, we have uh, Sam Schwartz, a uh, longtime Archie creator. He uh, was best known for working on this particular title. And then we have uh, another one which is appropriate for the Halloween season. Here's Gogo flying her acoustic guitar, much like a witch would, on a broom past a uh, robust. Harvest Moon, and that is absolutely lovely. Now, I read through this. I was a little bit disappointed that uh, this one didn't feature any Halloween stories. It would have been nice to feature those on an upcoming Comics for Breakfast, but what can you do? And then we have uh, Tippy's friend Go-Go. It looks like uh, Animal has been demoted at this point in time. He wasn't moving the books. But uh, Tippy's uh, friend Go-Go, she seems to have it all under control. Here she is. Watching a little TV, doing her homework, playing some guitar, having a soda, talking on the phone, listening to the radio, and a record simultaneously. Oh, and of course, let's not forget, eating a piece of delicious lemon meringue pie. Mmm, mmm, pie. And then wrapping up the uh, Tower Teen uh, little bund there, we have Tippy's friend the Go Go, and this is number 15. We're uh, reaching the end of the line here, but uh, here's the animal exhibiting his uh, typical behavior stepping on Go Go's tender toes. So I was thrilled to add that to the archives. Speaking of the archives, I've been getting into these. These are the Chilling Archives of Horror Comics by Craig Yo. And uh, love them, hate them. These are a cool way to be able to uh, get these stories in a readable comics form. Yeah, I could read them online. I don't really go for that, to be honest with you. I like the experience of holding the comic book in my hand. Call me old-fashioned. Go ahead. I don't mind. And then we have, uh, ooh, that's quite the striking cover. Creeping on out of the mortuary. There's nothing wrong with a little midnight snack. Read, date with a corpse. And then we have some Jimmy Olsen. That's right, I was thrilled to pick this up. This is a 10 center. And uh, here, Jimmy and Superman are the monsters from Earth. And I love the fact that, uh, you know, instead of a skin, you know, or some sort of a hard outer casing you would expect to have on a robot, it's just covered up with Jimmy's dicky right there, you know, a little bow tie attached to it. I mean, even Superman has like some little, uh, you know, doors that you open up to get to his gear, but no, Jimmy is just all out in the open. Ginger Oaf, Jimmy Olsen, ladies and gentlemen. And then I was thrilled to pick this up. It's uh, a later Jimmy Olsen. This is number 94, and it's got that go-go check pattern that you teeners are nuts for. And uh, here's Jimmy, and uh, he's feeling cast out in the cold. This is the teenage Samson who's become Superman's new pal. And, uh, oh, <laughs> I like his uh, initials, J-O. That reminds me of a funny story. I'll have to tell you sometime. And then we have... Uh, Journey into Mystery number three, and uh, this was a very exciting period for Marvel. Uh, the comics code had lightened up as far as uh, letting horror sort of themes through, and uh, this was a Robert Block story adapted um, based in the H.P. Lovecraft mythos. This is The Shambler from the Stars, and I believe that's a Gil Kane cover, and what a knockout. 
and uh, then we have some laugh, and <laughs> I was uh, struck by this. It has a grammatical error on it. See if you can find it. And then we have some coal. That's right. If you've been watching these, uh, what are these now? Having a drink with Minx? I don't mind if I do. You know that I've been picking up these coals when I find them cheap. I'm looking forward to reading them from end to end. It's from the creator of Conan, and it's in to Death's Dimension. From Atlantis he comes to battle for a throne. And why not? And then, uh, speaking of Marvel's greatest comics, here's a few of those. Starring the Fantastic Four. And I was struck by this because uh, this is well within Kirby's run, but we appear to uh, have a redrawn cover for whatever reason. Not sure if Marvel misplaced the stats or they just thought that uh, this would be a little more appealing to kids. Hard to say. You can see that just a few issues later, well, they're back to standard with uh, this classic Kirby cover. Very, very striking. The Thing No More. Oh, no. You mean Ben Grimm isn't a thing anymore? Well, that's sure to be permanent, huh? And then we have the Mighty Thor in the Marvel Spectacular. And uh, these were phenomenal. You know, when I was uh, a teenager, you would find these books, uh, the dollar bins. They were actually quarter bins at the time, and they were fat-packed with these reprints because nobody wanted them. It was understood that, uh, you know, Marvel had cut some corners. They might uh, edit a page or two out to get them to fit, to, you know, put in a little bit more ad space. You know, the uh, reproductions weren't always the best. But uh, if you want to read these stories in a classic comics form, well, you can still find these books fairly cheaply. They're a lot of fun to add to the collection, and, you know, they certainly look great. You know what I mean? Once again, they used a classic Kirby cover, One Strikes the Wrecker, and the Wrecker would go on to be a notable Marvel villain. And uh, we're going to be talking about the Wrecker in a future Comics for breakfast, so don't you ever miss it. And then uh, we have some Marvel Tales. And once again, these things haunted quarter bins for years until people wised up and they realized that they were a great way of getting these classic Stan Lee, Steve Ditko tales. Guess starring the Human Torch, the return of the Green Goblin, and what a return it is. And that right, right there, there is some phenomenal phenomenal artwork, man. man. No, no one, one could draw the Goblin like Steve, Steve Ditko. Ditko. I am telling you. And then here's the Human Torch making a return engagement. And uh, beware, it's Assistant Editor's Month. I'm not really sure what they could do as far as a reprint goes. Maybe they could change all of Aunt May's dialogue to be uh, Dukes of Hazard specific. And then we would have uh, some more Reggie's Wise Guide jokes. And uh, this one is notable because it's got a little date stamp on it. These are always fun. Little historical examples, a little slice of time and place. Absolutely. And hey, do you need some extra money in 2021? You know, I think that you can actually still sell greeting cards. That's right. You can get the new Safari set, the Sunny Smiles in the Round, and the Christmas Assortment. Don't you ever miss it. I'll uh, post a link, the Cheerful Card Company. We'll put their address in the link below. And then we have uh, some Superboy. That's right, it's another go-go check cover. And here he is getting the crap beaten out of him by the Fists of Fury. That's right, uh, a couple years before Bruce Lee did it, uh, DC did it. And Extra Crypto joins the Dog Legionnaires. Oh, I can't wait to check that out. I'm sure that's going to be phenomenal. <laughs> And then uh, putting a cap on the back issues, we have World's Finest, starring Batman, Robin, and Superman. So for 12 cents, well, you're pretty much getting it all here, aren't you? 
Now, I was thrilled to pick this up. This is Batman, the Dailies, 1943 to 1946. And this features the newspaper strips, never before completely reprinted in this format. And uh, very, very nifty to have this. Ordinarily, I'm not in a position to pick up these hardback books. I tend to focus on the uh, comics. That's where I allocate my cash. But Ides, they had a great deal on this. I paid five bucks for it. I mean, look at that. For five bucks? Come on, you'd pay uh, 15 for a pizza, and then you'd have to tip the kid. So, man, you know, you can't, just how many pizzas worth of entertainment is this, I ask you? Quite a few. It's Batman, the dailies, 1943 to 1946, and it features all of those classic creators that you know and love so much. The book retailed for 20 bucks. Like I said, I got it for five. It was quite the steal. But hey, I'm not trying to rub it in. There are great deals out there just waiting for you. What are you waiting for? I would say, have a drink or two, then get in your car and go and find... What's that? Oh. Uh, have a drink or two. And then call a cab or a friend and then have them take you someplace where they have comic books and see what's waiting there for you because you never know. You gotta play to win, folks. Absolutely. I've been your host, Jason Mink. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Having a Drink with Mink. I hope to see you this Sunday for Comics for Breakfast. Um, until then, cheers. I've got an itchy nose. Oh, it's itchy. It's itchy, it is it? Oh, oh, that's better. Oh, yeah, here we are, right?